Can't be sure. All right, it is time to talk politics now. Um, as you can see, Bruce Hawker is with me, political strategist, uh, and also joining us as always, Richard Alston, uh, former Liberal Cabinet Minister. Richard, good morning to you. Morning, Paul. Right, let's talk about the political agenda, and I'm hoping that um, the Prime Minister, uh, Bruce, having visited Afghanistan, will help move us on from mm. the sexism debate. I think it is in everyone's interest, not the least of them the taxpayer, to have our politicians move on from it, isn't it? I think so. I think, uh, you know, points were made all round in the last week on it. And I'm not sure that anyone really came out on top in it all. Um, you know, the government certainly made some points against Tony Abbott and reminded people about him. But, you know, it was in the context of Peter Slipper. And uh, that was where they were in difficult So space. do you agree with the view that this was a great speech made at entirely the wrong time? And on behalf of the wrong person. Mm, mm. I mean, that was the, the real problem here. Yeah, pick, the, it, it, pick the people you're going to be supporting. Exactly. It's a Jacques Hughes sort of a speech, but she wasn't defending um, Captain Dreyfus. She was defending Peter Absolutely. Slipper. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, it was a less than sort of honourable cause in which she was involved. Right, I think so that was you, the problem. You believe it's sort of pretty much neutral? You, you think that any yeah. loss for the government is matched by an equal loss by the coalition? I think so. And it just tended to remind people about uh, Tony Abbott. Having said that, you know, I, I don't know that the government's ever going to get too much um, mileage out of this ultimately because if you're looking at it in a strategic sort of a way then if this becomes a huge issue for the Liberal Party then they move past Tony Abbott to somebody else yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day these issues are always they always come down to so taxation, what do you say? don't criticise them too issues. much or they might get someone who's better <laughs> they might do so. <laughs> all right Richard do you agree um, with Bruce's analysis there do you think it's a it, it's come out about level pegging the whole sexism attacks I agree with the first part of Bruce's assessment that this was the wrong speech to be making and indeed I think what's happened really is a catastrophic backflip because they were absolutely convinced they're on a winner here. This was the advice they were getting from her communications director who'd run the same line in the UK and they've realised now that uh, it just doesn't wash. People mm -hmm. firstly understand that this was all about slipper nothing to do with abbott and and bruce would appreciate this that the real strategy here should have been you knew the greens wanted to unload slipper everyone knew he was gone a million well before that debate so it was clever of the opposition to bring it on but it should have been very foreseeable and all they had to do was to they wanted to protect Slipper, of course, to keep his vote, yeah. but all they had to do was to defer that whole debate. In other words, say, let's give Peter Slipper an opportunity to explain himself, then he would come on, he'd uh, hit the canvas and they'd be out of jail. But yes. instead they took this line of which was totally indefensible. You, um, interestingly enough, Richard, you mentioned the Greens. Bruce, the, the Greens are squeaky clean on the whole uh, misogynism uh, debate because they made the technical determination that they wouldn't wade in. That was a good move. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably right. Um, uh, and, but I think at the end of the day, that they are you know, pure than everybody else, so you expect them to, to do that. Yeah. Um, I, I just think in, in this whole thing, people are sort of factored in those issues around Tony Abbott now. And uh, you know, it was an issue in the so last election. So you don't need too. to waste any time on it because that, that's in the consciousness. It's there. I think Labor really needs to focus on the, you know, on the big vote changing All issues. Right, so we can move on to maybe something like asylum seekers. Three more votes arrived on the, uh, arrived on the weekend. Yeah. It, it's not working. This, it, the, the, the new policy is not working. Well, I think it's too early to say that. I mean, I think this is a real game of, you know, not blinking by both the government and by the asylum seekers. That's where... Uh, and, and by the... Uh, the, the and, and by the uh, smugglers. Smugglers. Yeah. That's the issue, I think, right now. They're saying, look, we're going to keep pushing them further and further into Australian uh, hands and it see It's the what real happens. issue that Labor just doesn't have the will. You know, I mean, still, the chances of being sent to Nauru or Manus are pretty low if you if you arrive on Christmas Island. Well, I think the will is there. I think uh, there's no enthusiasm on the part of the opposition to solve the problem, and I don't think we should be get, get too excited about, you know, their uh, position on this, other than to say, you know, they could solve this immediately by accepting the Malaysian solution. The Malaysian solution. solution. Um, Richard, uh, the opposition, of course, Tony Abbott, uh, discussing with uh, Indonesian counterparts and with the government in Indonesia, uh, their policy, the coalition's policies on um, asylum seekers and one of the things he's saying is there will be no surprises if you're dealing with the coalition government in Australia uh, on, on any front but also the idea that perhaps you trade aid money in return for the Indonesians prioritizing catching the smugglers. Look, I think it's very sensible of Tony Abbott to uh, be having this discussion now. It's something that uh, the government could have done months and months ago. 
And, of course, no surprises means that the Indonesians are well aware that part of the package for turning, for fixing this problem is to introduce temporary protection visas and turn back the boats when it's safe to do so. Now, yep. the fact is, no one takes this government seriously. They might have the will, but it's sort of political will because they've been forced to finally acknowledge that the Howard solution wasn't a bad one after all, but they really don't have their heart in it and therefore the message doesn't get through. You've got 4,000 boats have arrived in the last two months since the Houston report. You've had 400 in the last week. Yep. And the capacity, combined capacity of Marnus and... Uh, yeah, you're right. And, and even and although... The, is, is half that. I, I agree with you, and so that means I'm not agreeing with you, Bruce. I just don't think that Labor have the will to be real hard nose on asylum seekers and well, send that strongly. Well, OK, well, if uh, Tony Abbott was really serious about turning back the boats, he would go to Julia Gillard today and say, let's do a deal over Malaysia. I know what you let's mean, but I think Tony Abbott court. is serious on making this government look as bad as possible. The, the Absolutely. High he court, doesn't want to hold them. Yeah, all right. Of all right. <laughs> um, the Bruce High Court has told us that... Malaysia is not a goer. Yeah, Bruce, yeah, sure. uh, Bruce Hawker, yeah, but we could work on it. Bruce Hawker <laughs> and Richard Alston, thank you very much for joining us as always.